I'm just gonna. Oh, excuse me, ma. Bonjour, bonjour. Entree, s'il vous plaît, entree. I'd like to welcome you to the grand opening of Cafe, Cafe Marie. Je m'appelle Chef Marie. And today I'm going to teach my very first cooking class to several students of various ages. And so I thought today we would begin this lesson by talking about something that is so delicious that I know you guys are going to love it. And it is called, in France, le petit pretzel, or in other words, the pretzel. But before we do anything else about the pretzel, it's very important that we observe a few rules. First of all, I'm going to be showing you today how to make delicious pretzels. The first thing we will need to do, however, is to preheat our oven. So we're going to preheat our oven to 425 degrees. Oven is preheated. The second thing, and probably the most very important thing, is to lave les mains. Wash your hands. So I'm going to come over here to the sink. I'm going to turn our water on. And I am going to wash our hands. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, and Z. Now I've said my A, B, C, tell me what of me. It is so important at the beginning of any cooking lesson that we carefully wash our hands using soap and water for at least two minutes. That being said, let us continue. One of the first things that I like to do, class, when we begin a cooking lesson is, of course, get, get our materials assembled. And so for this particular recipe, we're going to need a cookie tray and some parchment paper to put on the cookie tray. And this is usually, I purchased the, the strips of parchment paper. We will of course need our recipe, some Pam cooking spray, a measuring cup. We will need something with which to uh, make our egg wash on our pretzel. So we have a brush here. And of course we will need an oven mitt. Since we are heating this until 425 degrees, it is so important that you do not get burned. The ingredients for our recipe today will include flour, and we will need some sugar and salt, which I've already mixed together in this container. We will need some highly active yeast, and I'll talk a little bit more about yeast because, ladies and gentlemen, it is a living organism. We will also need co kosher salt, a spoon, and a fresh egg. So to begin our lesson today, let us go back to, to getting our bowl together. The recipe for the pretzels, first of all, begins with four cups of flour. So I've already pre-measured the flour. I'm going to pour four cups into our mixing bowl. Let me go ahead and put this back over here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm gonna let my water run Get a little bit more. We need to have a, one and a half cups of warm water, not scalding water, because if you use scalding water, you're going to kill those yeasts, and we don't want that to happen. So we're going to carefully measure out one and a half cups of warm water. As I've said, I've already mixed my salt. I need one teaspoon of salt and a tablespoon of sugar, and to that, we are going to add one and a half cups, yes, warm water. Remember, not scalding water. And for your younger students out there, it's very important that whenever you begin cooking in the kitchen, that you are supervised by an adult. We are working with hot water today, and of course, a 425 degree oven, we don't want any accidents or burns. So we're gonna come back over here, and I'm going to add my package of highly active yeast. Now you can also use a cake of yeast, but I like to use just the package of yeast. I'm going to stir this, 
And while it is dissolving, I'd like to share with you a little story about the pretzels. Did you know, for example, that pretzels actually were invented by an Italian monk in the year 610 AD? And he wanted to reward his young students for learning their prayers. So he took strips of bread dough and folded them to resemble the crossed arms of the praying children. And today our pretzel symbolize love and it symbolizes enduring love. I think that's very important for us to know, enduring love. And also pretzels represent good luck. So I hope that you have good luck in making these pretzels today. So it looks like our yeast mixture is almost dissolved. And so we're gonna carefully take this over here and we're gonna put it into our bowl that has the four cups of flour. There we go. I'm going to put that off to the side here for a moment. I'm going to take a large spoon. You can use a wooden spoon. I would not recommend using plastic spoons. And we're going to mix this up. You know, there's a lot of science, a lot of chemistry involved in making pretzels. For one thing, for our older students, flour is acidic and it ranges in pH from anywhere from 6.0 to 6.8. It really depends upon the manufacturer, the manufacturer of, of the flour. And some interesting physical and chemical changes. I know that my cameraman is salivating over there. In fact, I wish I had smell-o-vision because if you could smell the aroma just smelling the aroma of this chemical change that is taking place. Oh my gosh, it's just, I could hardly stand it. And anyway, what happens is when you mix the sugars and the salts and the proteins and the amino acids together with this warm water, the aroma, as I said, is just fantastic. Plus, it also helps our, our pretzels brown when they are in the oven. This is known as the Maillard effect, the Maillard effect. The other thing that I'd like for you to know about the science behind pretzels is that yeast is a living organism. And when yeast comes in contact with salt and sugar, it produces a gas. And this gas is called carbon dioxide. And when this occurs, this chemical change actually begins to bubble and then it causes our yeast to rise. I've already prepared one um, bowl of this mixture so that you can see um, this is our flour and yeast mixture. And oh, even now the smell is absolutely, oh, it's irresistible. So once you have it mixed up, you want to form a nice soft ball. And this is my soft ball. Now sometimes the yeast can get a little sticky. So if the yeast is sticky, you can add a little bit more flour so that it's easier to work with. So that being said, let's go ahead and put this back here. And to show you what's gonna happen in this process, I want you to know that you can make any type of pretzel shape that you desire. You can do the figure eight. You can do stick pretzels. You can make them into shapes of the initials of your name. You can make hearts. You can make figure eights. You can make the traditional, for example, the, the arms, the crossed arms of the little children that were learning their prayers with our monk in the year 610 AD. So what I did, is I went ahead and I prepared for you just a few examples of our pretzel mixture. You can see quite clearly that the pretzel dough is rising, so that chemical change is taking place. Now, there are a lot of ways that you can eat your pretzels. Let me go ahead and show you what is very important. Here I have an egg. And what I would like to do is just take this egg and crack the egg. 
Make sure you don't get any eggshells in the egg. And then what I would like to do is I'd like to mix this egg mixture up. So when I take the egg, we're going to stir it. And then we're gonna take our brush and very carefully, we're going to brush our pretzel with this egg wash. We call this an egg wash. Now you don't want to put your pretzels too close together because if you do that, then one pretzel will come in contact with another pretzel and then you'll just have one big pretzel. And you might want to do that, but personally I like my individual pretzels. Now the next thing I like to do, I always like to put my equipment and try to clean up as I go along. I have some kosher salt, and I like the kosher salt because it's a little bit coarser than regular salt, and I can put as much or as little as I want to on my pretzels. Now, as you are using the parchment paper, you still, let me wash my hands again because they are rather sticky. I'll wash my hands again, dry them, always try to clean up as you go along, and then what we're going to do is we're going to take some camp cooking spray, any brand will do, of course, and then we're going to take our dough, and remember you can flour your hands again so it won't be so sticky, and then we're going to place some of our pretzels on the parchment paper. Let me go ahead and take this batch and put it in our oven. And we're going to bake them for about 10 minutes. It's very important that you watch them. And for your, for your older students, I think you could probably handle this, but the younger students, I want parental supervision. I just happen to have some pretzels that are already completed. Carefully take them out of the oven. Oh, wow. Do you see that browning effect that we have here? That's the Maillard effect. Now, earlier, there are other ways in which you can make pretzels. You can actually take a lye solution and boil this lye solution with water. However, I would not recommend that because lye is very caustic and it can also give off fumes. This one does not require any, any uh, boiling at all to make those pretzels rise and puff up. Now I deliberately left these pretzels undecorated because I brought some different ideas with me to share with you how you can put and what you can put on your pretzels. For example, once again, you can do the traditional, like I do. Um, I like to put my more salt on. You can um, spread them with a little bit of butter and put some more salt on. You can take a mixture of cinnamon and sugar and sprinkle cinnamon and sugar on top of your pretzels. Now, for those of you who like the, the savory, you can also take, oh wow, Parmesan cheese. A great invention by Chef Boyardee, if I do say so myself. And you can put Parmesan cheese on them or any cheese of your choice. I also have some Tostitos made with real cheese, salsa con queso. Oh, 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 oh. And you can take, especially when they're nice and warm, and take a knife and you can swirl it on top of your pretzels. You actually can even use salsa. So there you have it, class. Le Bretzels, French style, fresh out of the oven from Cafe Marie. I hope you enjoyed today's lesson. Check out my website at www.chefmarie1234 for additional recipes that you can do with your family this summer. Have fun cooking. Adiento. Bye.